Hi, welcome to episode 166 of the Passionate Funeral Podcast. My name is Tracy and you can find me as Schnüffelt here on Ravelry and on Instagram. I do have an Inst Instagram, yeah, no. <laughs> I do have a Ravelry group that I only use to post the time and date of the next BKN. And um, we also do have a Discord server and I will leave the link to that down below in the description box so you can join there, you know. Um, I am, the first thing I wanted to tell you today, I did put out a promo video for a beginner spinner series that I'm doing on Patreon. And I have to apologize for that video because I wanted to sit down, do this five minute video, talk about all the important things, you know, and then my cats went absolutely crazy and I had to edit and cut this so much. I'm not sure if it even makes sense anymore. So I'm sorry for that. I never wanted to cut stuff out, but that video was just unusable and I did not have time to do another one. So yeah, that was a bit of a fail on my behalf, but mm, oh well. Okay, now let's talk knitting. I have absolutely no finished stuff. Didn't finish anything since my last podcast. My last podcast, like regular real podcast was somewhere between Christmas and New Year's Eve, I think. Somewhere in between there. And I have been knitting, but not as much, I feel, but it doesn't matter. So for knitting in the present, I have four projects that I'm actively working on. The first one is a pair of socks that I'm knitting with two of my friends. We meet um, once a week for a Zoom meeting and we only knit these socks during that meeting. And we are all knitting the same socks. So we all have this Opal sock yarn and we're all doing plain vanillas, just, you know, just normal socks. And the first one is done. I have not yet started the second one. So this is that project. The next project is the blanket. It is the Habitation Throw Pattern. Uh, the pattern is by Helen Stewart. And I am using the idea of the pattern, but I'm not doing what she says because she makes one big blanket and I'm knitting squares, blanket squares for, you know, a blanket project. Now let's, let's hold it this way. So this is what I'm working on here. I have this in this unicorn bag from Primark <laughs> that is usually just hanging here on my chair. And whenever I, you know, have a bit of time during the day, I will grab this project and work on the square. And now I've lost my yarn. So I have in a little croissant stitch marker, Project Progress Keeper, and yeah, this is what I'm working on. I have to get the yarn. And I've now formed a plan on how to attach these to each other. In my whip shaming video, I said I might want to crochet them together and I completely abandoned that idea. What I'm going to do is something like this, which probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also, my proportions in drawing are a bit off, but just a bit. So um, what I will do is, these with the diagonal stripes are the squares I'm knitting. I will put them together with 10 stitches in between in a solid gray. And I will knit them together using this stripe. And I will, you know, make four stripes with three squares each. And then I will put, knit those together again and knit a lock cabin style border and then use all of the leftovers of the colorful yarns that I had used for the squares to do a like a 10 stitch blanket border around. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now. It does make sense to me. And I'm sure you will see what I'm talking about once I get to those stages. But I just wrote that down this morning so I wouldn't forget, you know? And then the other two projects, um, you also already know. So I'm really warm. <laughs> um, the longer hair makes a difference. <laughs> so the first one is in this project back here. It's just a tote bag that I've had for a very long time. And it is the Skipness Cardigan by Martin Story. This is a free pattern on Ravelry and the Rolling website. And I'm using this pattern and I am knitting it out of two yarns held together, which is not what the pattern calls for. The pattern I think calls for a Roland felted tweed or cashmere tweed or something. And I'm using a uh, mohair silk 
that's the, the rest of the first scape, and this yellow sucker. And the shades are completely different. But let me get a full skein of the silk so you can see. So these are my two, two yarns that I'm holding together. And this is what it looks like, knit up. Where do you come? Here. And I really love it. I think this is going to be really, really pretty. So here it is. I put in a marker here, which I always do. And that is where I um, started the armhole shaping because later on you have to measure and now knit na -na -na, centimeters from armhole shaping. And I just put in a marker somewhere in the middle where it's easy to measure up. So this is how far I am. I started the armhole shaping and I'm now knitting up the back of my sweater. And I think this is going to be so pretty and very warm, very, very warm because mohair just makes everything warmer, you know? And that shade of golden yellow is just perfection. The, the yarns on their own, I actually don't think the shades would have worked for me. The yellow is a bit too bright, too sunny, and the mohair is just kind of dirty. You know what I mean? It looks like it's a dirty mustard color. But together, this golden color, oh, I love this. I think this is really pretty. And it's super easy cables as well. So this is my in the evening watching TV project, which, you know, that's what I'm doing. I knit every evening a few round rows on that. And I just think it's so pretty and will fit into my wardrobe like seamlessly. And then in this project bag that I made, I have my skirt, which is my current reading name <laughs> just whacked myself into my glasses <clears throat> so okay my skirt it looks like this it's still it's gonna look like this for a long time you know these rows are very long I just had another increased row since I picked it up I knit from here down so yeah it's the jaunty skirt the pattern is by Ririko it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and that's how far I've gotten. I'm working on this also almost every day when I'm, you know, reading or just need something absolutely brainless but not portable. That's what I grab when I need that. So these are the four things I'm actively working on. And I have a fifth one, which is my secret test knit that I cannot show it to you. So, but that is also on the needles and worked on. Um, but secret, so, you know, nothing to show. Which brings me to a question that I had on my whip shaming video. The question was, how do you decide what to knit on next? So when I went through my um, actual whips, the things that I'm currently working on, I told you that I have this small thing here that hangs on my chair and that I work on whenever I have time, which means in the morning when I have my first coffee, because I'm trying not to use my phone in that time, you know, just get up and then have an hour before I touch my phone for the first time, because I'm on that thing for way too much time anyways. So I grabbed that in that time. The socks I'm knitting on while I have a Zoom call with my friends, and once they are done, I'm going to work on something other that requires no brain power whatsoever because, you know, the many, many VKNs we had just proved to me that I need stock in its stitch in the round <laughs> or, or it's flat, no pattern whatsoever when I am talking to other people. And then I have one project, which is the cardigan that is a bit more involved where I have to think, where I have to keep track of my rows. And I have the brainless but not so portable project that is the skirt right now that I use for when I want to read. And the way I choose the next project to pick up again um, is more or less, when I finish that cardigan, I want to have something involved. You know, I want to have something that I need to think about a bit more. So I will probably pick up either another cable project or a color work project. Uh, or something that has a lot of shaping to it. And once the skirt is finished, I will probably pick up a blanket, you know, because that is just super easy to knit. And 
those squares will keep me company for a while, but then I'm just going to work on socks probably, you know? And yeah, that is how I choose. It's the necessity, what do I need project-wise, but also what do I really want to knit on right now? Do I want to do cables? Do I want to do color work? Do I want to do neither? Do I want to do a shawl? You know, once the um, cardigan is finished, I could also pick up one of those Stephen West shawls that I have lingering because they are a bit a bit involved. You know, they are usually easy to knit, but they're not a stock knit sock. You know what I mean? They're somewhere in between. So that is that is that. For knitting in the future, I actually have something that I want to talk about. And I showed it on my Vlogmas. I'm not sure if I showed it on the podcast, but I do want to knit a dress for myself. And it was supposed to be my New Year's Eve cast on. And then New Year's Eve was so busy that I didn't knit at all. And New Year's Day, I thought, okay, today is the day. And then my sister calls like, hey, are you home? I want to come visit you. I was like, yeah, sure. Come on over. And so she did, and I didn't knit again. And now it's the 17th, is it? Let's check. It's the 17th, and I have not yet started this dress. So my plan now is to start that on my birthday, which is next week. So I'm going to do that. It's going to be my birthday cast on. Okay, for knitting, that is it for knitting. But I have a lot of spinning, like a lot, a lot of spinning. I'm going to start with my spindle project that lives in this project bag, which is the little sister of this one. When I made this project bag, I had a few cutoffs of the main fabric that are, you know, I got that as a leftover piece that was a bit weirdly shaped. So I cut off these two larger pieces and I had two smaller pieces left. And the rest is a pair of, an old pair of jeans from my husband. So I did that embroidery on it just to you know get it a bit more fun and I made this weirdly shaped bag I was like hmm, I wonder what to do with this I can tell you what to do with this this is the perfect size and shape for a spindle bag so it is it is a spindle bag and it's kind of dirty because I've been keeping I've, I keep carrying this around with me when I go for a walk and on my vlogmas and a bit before Vlogmas, I did a ply on the fly tutorial for my Patreon. And then during Vlogmas, I did a lot of spinning outside. When I go for a walk, I carry a tote bag that has my little foldable tripod so I can, you know, film stuff. It has a small knitted blanket that I can either use to sit on or to, you know, get warm. Um, and it has this project bag here. And I've been spinning ply on the fly on it. And I have finished two mini skeins already. These are both of the same, of course. <laughs> and I'm working on the third and last mini skein right now. This fiber came in an advent calendar from Bakewell Hearts a few years ago, like three or four, or five, six, I don't know, long time ago. <laughs> And this is the last little bit of fiber that I have left. And on here, I have the first, so I had two left for the last skein. I think these are both four, four of those little bumpies. Maybe one is four, one is five, but I didn't want to get them too heavy because when the spindle gets too heavy, I feel like my spinning changes, you know, the yarn gets thicker or thinner and I just, I don't like that. So I just decided to make smaller skeins instead. And I am now working on this one. The second to last little fiber bump is already finished. Like I said, I'm doing ply on the fly. And if you have never heard that term, very briefly, you spin a single and you immediately ply it into a Navajo ply yarn in one go. That is plan on the fly, made very simple. If you really want to check it out, like I said, I do have a tutorial on Patreon and I also have some videos of me just doing it, you know, during Vlogmas, you can see it, but in sped up. But I do have a few videos where I just put up videos of me spinning and doing the plan on the fly technique. They are on my YouTube, so you can find a lot of ways to check this out. 
So yeah, I have one more bump to add. The spindle I'm using is from 3G Woodworks and it is a Buckeye Burl spindle. I'm guessing it weighs somewhere around 28 grams. I have realized that I do not enjoy spinning on lightweight, two lightweight spindles. I have one 3G Woodworks lace spindle that I have in a, like a to-go coffee cup with some fiber. And I do not enjoy spinning on that because it's too light, you know, nothing happens. I like a bit of weight to my spindles. So this is this project. And as I am almost done with it, I have decided to find the next fiber to spin on that for my ply on the fly, walking outside spinning. Because let me tell you that going out for a walk, taking my spindle and spinning while outside in nature, no sound around me, except for, you know, natural sounds of nature. That has been so good for me and my anxiety. And the next thing I'm going to spin is this one. I have no clue what the fiber is. I really do not know. I can tell you though that I dyed this myself and it is maybe three grams. I'm not sure. It's 50 or less. And it is this kind of rainbow-ish progression thing. And I need to f decide if I want to spin this more like a gradient, which, you know, would be smart because this is a ply and fly. Or if I want to take it apart and do not ply and fly, but, you know, spin two singles or three, do a traditional three ply. In the end, which is all, you know, you, it doesn't have to be ply on a fly. It can also just be something else. But I have to decide if I want to do that. Now, why is there some fuzz in here? Get away. But yeah, this is the next fiber for my outside spinning on the spindle. And I'm going to keep the spindle the same because this spindle has seen a lot. <laughs> it's seen a lot of bumping to the floor. And it's arrived everything. So I decided to keep that as my outside spindle. And that's the spindle spinning. Now onto wheel spinning. Let's get started. <laughs> Somewhere, I, I'm not sure if this was in a new year or before new year, but I spun the second bobbin of this pink spin, the complete second bobbin and half of the first. So sometime last year after Tour de Fleece, I found two braids of fiber in my stash that had the same colorway name they were both this hot pink. One of them was a BFL mohair blend. No, wait, I do have the tags here. I don't have to invent stuff. I can check. I can check it out. One of them was a BFL mohair blend 7525. And the other one was a vegan fiber and it was 50-50 faux cashmere and bamboo. And I just... I felt like I wanted to use those together, but if I were to spin them separate and then ply them together, I was afraid that shrinking of the two yarns would be different in washing because the two fibers are so vastly different. So what I did instead is I carded them together into four bats and I then pulled those bats back into roving and I spun that and this is the result. So this is the first bobbin. I had half of that finished and spun the other half and spun this bobbin. And this is what I have, this beautiful pink. And the thing is, pink is not a Tracy color, you know? Um, when I showed them on Instagram, someone's like, yeah, it's not really the color I think of when I think of you, because when the color does not naturally occur in a forest, it's not your color. And that is very true. So I've been thinking about what to do with this and I've already found the perfect, perfect project. So between Christmas and New Year's, I did sew three skirts for myself. And one of them is kind of a beigey skirt with turquoise and teal trees or, you know, parts of trees. Turquoise and teal trees. I cannot think of the board, <laughs> like an arm from a tree. And um, they have those pinkish birds on and it has pink buttons. 
So I thought I would knit a pink vest out of this to go with that skirt and then wear a white blouse or a black blouse or whatever underneath. So that is what this is going to become. I spun this fiber on my Michi von Schwarzenstein spinning wheel, which is a German spinning wheel. And yeah, it just needs to be plied, which I have been putting off because I'd rather spin than ply. Um, but I need to ply, as you will see in a second. So that's the first thing. And you can go up here now. Yesterday, I started spinning something on the sidekick. I found those two bats and decided to start with the, with this one first. They are from Rathgert Zeit, from a German indie fiber maker. And I do not know if they still exist. Sorry, but I um, pulled it into halves. And I started spinning the first half on my sidekick. And I didn't bring it because I just started, you know, it's... That's it, it started. But it is this beautiful orange, yellow, golden color. And the other bat is a, has hints of that golden, yellowy orange, and then a lot of white and cream. And I first thought about plying them together, but I'm going to do two smaller skeins because these are 50 gram bats. So I'm going to do two 50 gram skeins and I will find a project for those sometime. So that is what I started on the sidekick. And now to the things that where I can show you a lot more. So I've been working on a combo spin. And I'll say I wanted to show you. I have boxes like this. I showed you boxes in my whip shaming video. Like clear boxes with clear lids and black handles. And those are my blanket boxes. And I have pink boxes as well. They look like this. They have a little label on them. And I do have one of these boxes for each of my spinning wheels. So every box holds the spinning project that is on that wheel at the moment, unless it fits into a small bag and I can have that lying around. So in here, I have a combo spin that I started before the pandemic started. That's all I know. That's, that's what I'm sure of. And it is very bright and colorful and I finished the first bobbin so this is now completely done um, this is the left or the, the end you know and I specifically pulled it into the black so I can find it easily so this is what my bobbin looks like super colorful but also very thin this is very thin applied at best it will be a fingering weight probably thinner so first bobbin completely done but then i have three bobbins that are almost done they are this full so you know the majority of the spinning is done i just have to finish the three remaining bobbins to look like this one and then i will be able to ply and for this, I already know what I want to do with it. And I didn't know that before I started spinning. It was just when I had started. Get out of here. When I started spinning this, I had that, that vision. You know, sometimes you just have an idea. And for this, I want to do the Carbeth sweater, which is a sweater by Kate Davis. And it's bulky weight. Now I'm spinning a light fingering weight yarn. But I can, you know... I can work around that and I want to use that for the top part um, and then add a flowy skirt because I think I have enough um, yarn in the end because like I said this is really thin I mean I'm not sure if you can tell with the camera set up like this but this is very 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 thin and I do have the labels so let me check them out I had five braids of fiber. They were around 100 grams each, so it's only 500 grams, but I'm guessing I'm getting a lot of yardage. So they are merino nylon, superwash. All of them are superwash. So I have a merino nylon, another merino nylon, more merino nylon, superwash BFL, and another merino nylon. So like I said, I want to do the carbeth at the top, then I want to have an elastic channel in the waist, 
and then a flowy skirt to the bottom. And I know exactly what I, how I want to do that because that I thought about was spinning and it just had like a, uh, like a light bulb moment. And that is that. I really want to make that. I think it's going to be really pretty and really warm despite being super thin and very lightweight in the end. So that is on my rose spinning wheel. And now for the, the big boy in here, this is the box for the Louet S45, which I love spinning on. And this is what I have in here. So when I picked this back up, this also started before the pandemic. When I picked this bag up, I had four bobbins finished. And before sitting down to podcast, I finished the eighth bobbin. And I'm just going to show them to you. Now, let me try. Yep, let's see how this works. I need to show four bobbins. And another four bobbins, okay. You know, this is where having really big hands comes in handy. Okay, here we go. So I have eight bobbins. I cannot show them to you next to each other, I think. Oh well, more or less. <laughs> so I have eight of these, eight bobbins finished. They look like this. I'm gonna get rid of them now so I can show you stuff. So the good thing about these bobbins is that you can easily put them on the table and they will just stand. Now I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show two of them and I'm going to show you the fiber. So this is the fiber. I still have a ton of fiber left. So that's the fiber. And this is the yarn that comes out of this fiber. I love that. I think this yarn will be so, so, so pretty. And this is something where I actually had the idea of what I wanted to, to knit with the yarn before I started spinning. So this is very thick. Um, I'm going to keep this bobbin here and put everything else away again. So that's the fiber again. It is a merino fiber. It is not super fun to spin because there are weird bits in it that are so hard to, to work around. Maybe it has some weird silk in it. I don't know, but it's not super fun to spin. And yeah, let's put you away. Put the bobbins away. And get out the rose bobbin again. So I have been spinning these two on the same day. I finished this yesterday and then I spun that one. Can you see how extremely different they are when it comes to thickness of the single? It took a bit to get from this back into this. But I'm really happy about how this is looking, you know. I need this to be a worsted weight in the end or almost an Aran weight. And yeah, so that is that is this spinning. I want to kind of show you one bobbin of all of them. I can do that, right? So that's my my three current spinning projects that I have to show. This needs to be finished spinning. This needs to be plied. And now for this one. Like I said, I'm spinning this for a specific project and the project in question is called Tucked Away. It is a um, cardigan with a cable and the pattern is by Stephanie Lotvin. And I haven't brought it here because I don't need it yet. But my plan is I have eight of these bobbins spun. I'm gonna show it to you again because it's so pretty. I'm going to ply six of them now and I'm going to keep two of them as a reference and when I applied the six skeins and I took them off and I'd done all the measuring and all the calculations and everything I then can estimate if that will be enough with eight bobbins or if I need to spin two more or four more because I have enough fiber to do that so that is the plan for this spinning project ply six out of those eight break, uh, bobbins and calculate how much more I need. So that is that. And that's the spinning. That's it for spinning. 
It's also it for crafting. Next thing I'm going to talk to you about is reading, listening, watching. I have not listened to anything, nothing at all, no audiobook, no podcast, nothing, except for music, of course. But for watching, <laughs> last night I watched uh, Jungle Cruise on Disney Plus. Um, yeah, it's that's the mailman. It's not Pirates of the Caribbean, let's just say it like that. It was enjoyable and fun, but it's not essential watching. And apart from that, I don't remember watching anything. I don't know. But the reading. I finished two books so far this year. First book I finished is called The X Talk. This is a romance book. It's like an enemies to lovers, um, fake dating or fake ex dating and forced proximity only one bed all of those fun things so this book i gave it four stars i really liked it it is about shay i think she's called shay yeah her name is shay she works at a radio station and um she's been there for 10 years and all she ever wanted was to be on air but according to herself she has a very squeaky not radio ish voice and um, she has a new colleague and his name is Dominic and he's like the poster boy, you know, the golden child and he's on air like three months in and for an interview and he wants to be like a real serious reporter and the radio station where they're at, they're struggling financially and they have to let a lot of people go and they need new ideas and Shay just suggests doing like a dating show but with a twist so her idea was to find two exes who would have this dating show and basically do a don't do what we did and you might survive as a couple and her boss is like oh that's a wonderful idea uh you and dominic you're going to do that and she's like but we're not exes yeah no one no one cares that's not important you you are going to do that and he basically tells them they will either do this or they will both lose their jobs. So they agreed to do it. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Because that's also what says on the back, you know. I didn't tell you any spoilers. I, yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it. And it was a fun book. The next thing I read was on my Kindle, which I have decorated by now. I put on that Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, sticker that says never never underestimate the power of a girl with a book at the top and at the bottom i have a quote from the dead poet society it says but poetry beauty romance love these are what we stay alive for and i have one of those pop grips because i didn't have that and i realized that you know my hand would especially when i read in bed you know my hand would just oh, cramp up now i can just put it in here and just not care so and I decided on this fun one. Now, let's go to the book. The book that I read as my second book of the year, that I still have to do a short review on, because I got asked to do short reviews for the books that I read on Instagram. And I did for the X Talk, I have not yet done for this book. And that is The Spanish Love Deception. It's another romance book. And it is long. I think this book has like 480 pages, <laughs> which is very long for a romance novel and um i still gave it five stars i really enjoyed this book it's another fake dating enemies to lovers story so the thing is this is about lena her name is catalina she um she's an immigrant from spain and she fled spain after her last relationship went down the drain and she works at an uh entech firm company in New York City and she has a colleague and his name is Aaron and she hates him and uh, he's yeah so she her sister is getting married to her ex's best friend brother I think he's the best friend I'm not sure so her sister is getting married and of course Lena is going to be the maid of honor and when her mother called and said, ah, are you going to come? And when do you come? And how's life and stuff? She tells them the lie of bringing a date to the wedding because her ex just newly got engaged. 
and she didn't want to face that by herself so she just told her mom yeah I'm gonna bring a date and uh, it's my boyfriend and she tells that to her friend in the cafeteria of the workplace and like oh fuck what am I gonna do you know and then Aaron shows up and says yeah I'll do it I'll I'll be there I'll you know I'll accompany you and he's like no absolutely not I hate you why would I do that and so of course in the end he has to accompany her because nobody else is there to do it and yeah that's that's what this book is about I liked it it was really fun but I talked about this before so in the X talk and also in the Spanish Law of Deception the women are smallish you know short and in this setting they're both described to have curves and like food but still in a slim kind of way you know not in a plus size fashion in a slim but not super skinny way and both of the men are <laughs> tall dark and handsome because it's my husband <laughs> he's walking around so because in every romance novel there is every hero is tall like so tall and so broad-shouldered and so full of muscles and you know when they take their shirts off you're almost faint because they're so sculpted and they have black hair and blue eyes every book i read in the romance genre in the last year which were a lot that was a thing and was a thing for these two as well why <laughs> why is that i mean yeah i don't get it but that's it that's the reading i read those two books i really enjoyed them i'm currently reading the first book in the ice planet barbarian series and i'm not yet sure if i like it i'm on page 60 ish out of 190 it's a very short one it's on kindle unlimited so i didn't pay anything for it you know anything I paid the Kindle Unlimited, but not the book. And uh, I'm not sure if I like it. I'm going to talk to you about all of that when I finished. Because, like I said, I'm not quite sure yet. So, I'm reading that on the Kindle. And I need to find a new physical book to read as well. That's the reading. Now, everything else. There will be a VKN this weekend on the 22nd, I think. I cannot check because my calendar is over there filming me right now but I'm pretty sure it's the 22nd it is Saturday 22nd of January is the next VKN it's going to be at 9 p.m. Berlin time and I am going to post links to both uh, the Ravelry group and discord and you can just click on the link and you enter my zoom and we can have a VKN together um, for the other thing I wanted to talk about, I started a beginner spinner series on Patreon. It's a 10 course class or 10 course, 10 part course. I'm not sure how to say it, but it takes place, it takes part over 10 different videos. Let's, no. six of them are for wheel spinning, which is what I started with. And the next four then will be spindle spinning. I know, I know, ideally it would have been the other way around, but I got so excited about the wheel spinning one that I started with that one. And so if you want to learn how to spin, check out Patreon and I will show you. And now for, you know, mental health talk. I have talked about a lot of about my mental health problems and about anxiety and relieving anxiety because you know now that I learned what it is I can work with it and one of the things that really helped me in the last weeks and months is this thing here I've been taking this spindle on my walks with me and before I decided to try that I would always just keep walking, you know, walk back, walk and get back home. Or I would go and have headphones with me and listen to an audiobook or a podcast. And I think that was a bit of a mistake because now I leave the headphones at home. I give myself more time. 
I take my spindle, I find a nice bench, I set up my tripod to spin some videos, yeah, to, no, to film a video of the spinning, sometimes, not always, but sometimes I do that. But it always helps me feel so much better. It calms me down, like real, to a chill, super chill level. And I should have done that way earlier. So what I have decided to do, I mean, now it's cold and miserable outside. I was outside spinning two days ago and I did film a synth, like seven minute video. And I put that up on YouTube without any sound, without me saying anything. It's just me spinning sounds of nature and the nearby um, road <laughs> and just, you know, calm. And what I decided to do when the weather is getting a bit better, I want to pack a rucksack. I sewed a rucksack two years ago and I want to pack that. I want to put in a um, like a seating cushion thing. I want to pack in my spindle. I want to pack in a book, a journal and some um, pens and like a bottle of water and just I want to do like a daily walk which I am very well on the way to doing you know and I want to give myself more time and I want to go alone I think that is important in that context for me because sure I love going on a walk with my husband and my son but it's different than when I go alone and I have time to spin and just, you know, center myself in a way or read a book. And that's just not possible with a six, almost seven year old who keeps running around like crazy. So I want to give myself the time to do that, you know, go out on my own with my rucksack, with my calming pack of stuff. And I want to do that on a daily basis, which of course might have to happen in the morning when my son is in school. But that doesn't matter because if it's super cold, I can just layer up, you know, wear more clothes and not sit around forever. But, you know, give myself 10 minutes or so to just sit and either journal or read or spin. And I think that is very good for me, you know, and it is very good for my anxiety because it also helps me to think when I go out and I am in a weird emotional state, I can have that time where I stand there and spin, specifically with spinning. I can really think about the situation. Is what I'm feeling actually what's going on? Or is my anxiety telling me things in a different way that they objectively are? You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. So... Ultimately, it's not important if it makes sense to you or not. It makes sense to me. And I feel like this has helped me deal with my anxiety problems over the last month a lot. And that's why I want to keep doing it. I want to just, yeah, I want to do that for myself. And I will. So I think that is it for today. I, um, I really want to do this every Monday. Monday schedule podcast because I'm I missed doing this on a regular basis so I hope that I will be able to do that this year and I hope you all have a wonderful 2022 I mean it would be nice wouldn't it to have a good year for a change so um and even if the year stays weird and shit I hope you make the best of it in the way that is possible and I hope you all have a wonderful time and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye.